Our second talk is also going to be from Facebook, uh, Mask Predict, Parallel Decoding of Conditional Mask Language Models, given by Omer Levy. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, today, I'd like to tell you about a new approach uh, to machine translation, which generates the entire target uh, of the, uh, the entire target sentence in parallel. And this is a joint work with my friends at FAIR, uh, Marjan, Inhan, and Luke. So nowadays, the standard approach to machine trans uh, translation is to use an autoregressive model. Uh, these models generate the target sentence, token by token, left to right usually, and at each iteration they can look back and condition on what they've generated so far. Now non-autoregressive models, on the other hand, uh, predict the entire target sentence in one parallel forward pass. So in theory, what an autoregressive model does in n iterations, a non-autoregressive model could do in only one. But um, this turns out to be a bit too good to be true. Um, as you see, if you actually train an encoder-decoder transformer uh, to do this without any tricks, uh, what you're likely to get at test time is a lot of these kind of uh, repetitions. So you'll see the same token, which probably should appear somewhere in the target sentence, uh, but it, you'll see it repeated over and over again. So this is a symptom of a deeper issue called uh, the multimodality problem, which was identified by uh, uh, Jiatao Gu et al., um, which uh, I'll explain in a second. And the way we're going to try and tackle the multimodality problem um, it, it is by conditioning on part of the target sequence, but still predicting everything else in parallel. And we're going to repeat this process for a couple of iterations, uh, specifically a constant number of iterations, uh, until uh, um, we get our uh, result. So in this talk, uh, I'm first going to tell you about how we trained uh, encoder-decoder transformers as conditional masked language models, which observe part of the target and predict all of it in parallel. We'll then talk about the mask predict decoding algorithm. This is our main contribution, uh, which can decode the entire target sequence in a small, constant number of uh, iterations. And finally, uh, I'll try to convince you that it works and explain how it helps to address the multimodality problem that I talked about earlier by gradually allowing the model to condition on more and more of the target tokens. So speaking of the devil, uh, what is the multimodality problem? So let's say you want to translate the phrase, thank you very much, uh, from English to German. Uh, and you can go with two common translations. So one is uh, Dankeschön, and the other would be vielen Dank. However, uh, what you might get from a non-autoaggressive model uh, is something like Danke Dank, which is obviously <laughs> incorrect. Uh, the first token is predicted according to option one, while the second token thinks that we're going with option two. And the reason that this happens specifically in non-autoaggressive models is that the token predictions are conditionally independent of one another. So because we're predicting the entire target sequence in parallel, each token prediction is conditioning only on the, saw, uh, on the source and uh, not on what's going on with the other tokens. So let's see how we can uh, uh, work around this problem. So the first thing we're going to do is to take an encoder-decoder model and train it like BERT. So we start with a regular encoder-decoder transformer uh, and start by removing any self-attention restrictions in the decoder. Because in the typical decoder, we use what's called causal attention, uh, which basically prevents tokens from attending on the future. In this case, because we're not doing left to right anymore, we actually want the tokens to look into the future, and we want every token to actually look at every other token in this case. Um, next, we're going to take the target sequence, sample k tokens from it, and mask them. 
And this is very similar to what BERT does, but because we also have the source sequence, which we're not touching, we're, we're not masking it at all, we can allow ourselves to mask a lot more tokens from the target, and even in some cases, mask the entire target. So finally, what we're going to do is predict the mass tokens by conditioning on both the source sequence and the part of the target sequence which we didn't mask. So when predicting, for example, uh, the token capital D, uh, the model is going to condition on capital A, B, and F from the target, as well as all the lowercase tokens from the source. Now there's one last thing that we need to do. Uh, we're going to add a special length token to the encoder, kind of like the CLS token in BERT. And we're going to train it to predict the length of the target sequence using only the information in the, source, uh, in the source sequence. And the reason we even need to do this is because our decoding algorithm, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, has to know the length of the target sequence a priori. And uh, dealing with the length of the target sequence is actually one of our uh, open problems. Uh, we're not really solving it well here. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll have time at the end to come back to it. So let's talk about our decoding algorithm, mask predict. Um, so we have our trained model and our uh, source sequence. And the first thing we're going to do is, like I said earlier, we, we are, we're going to predict the uh, number of tokens in the target sequence. Uh, we're then going to fill all these tokens with masks and predict the entire target sequence in parallel. Now, uh, uh, and at each time we're basically going to select the word with the highest probability. So we're doing kind of argmax per token. Um, so up to this point, what we've been doing is basically vanilla uh, non-autoregressive decoding. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to run a few iterations of mask predict. So at each iteration of mask predict, what we're going to first do is mask the least probable tokens. So basically we're keeping only those tokens that the model is most confident about. Next, uh, we're going to predict all the target tokens in parallel, just like we did in the initialization phase. But this time, uh, the decoder is going to observe all the predictions that we didn't mask. So it's actually got more information, and it can give us a better prediction overall. And we can keep going on doing mask predict for as many times as we like. So how many iterations do we actually need? Um, in our main experiments, we kept the number of iterations constant. Uh, specifically, we, we ran experiments up to 10. Uh, and we'll actually see in a bit that uh, four iterations are even enough to get pretty good results. Uh, we also tried a function of the target length, uh, n, but the differences were actually not that big from, from just uh, using a constant number. Um, as for the number of masks, uh, we simply made it shrink linearly. So we started with 100% masked, and we uh, gradually exposed the decoder to more and more uh, inputs. So let's see an example of how mask predict works. And th this is actually an example, a real example from the uh, corpus. Uh, so we have our source sentence in German, uh, and we're going to translate it into English. And the model predicts that there are going to be uh, 12 tokens in the target, so we initialize the target with 12 masks. Uh, we then predict everything in parallel, so uh, we get a translation that's kind of partially true, uh, but not entirely grammatical. Uh, you'll notice, for example, that the model predicts the word completed in two separate uh, positions. And this is very, very typical behavior of the first uh, uh, iteration of mask predict. Uh, in the second iteration, we're going to mask eight tokens because the number of tokens, is, uh, the number of masks is decreasing, uh, and we're going to keep the best four. We repredict this, the entire sentence again. Uh, actually including the unmasked tokens, but those don't happen to change in this case, and arrive at actually a pretty decent translation at this point. Uh, but we have another iteration that we can run. So we're going to try to improve on what we have. Uh, we're going to mask four more tokens, the, the, the least probable ones according to the model, and repredict everything. And you can see that uh, the departure, for example, was replaced with the word withdrawal, which 
kind of a better fit in this context, as well as the date changing into a more typical uh, English language format. So how well does MaskPredict work? Well, we're first going to compare MaskPredict to other non-autoregressive uh, and parallel decoding approaches. And we'll focus here on English to German, uh, although we also have a bunch of uh, evaluations in the paper, so check it out. Um, there are three main approaches that we compared against, and uh, on this data set specifically, the iterative uh, refinement uh, approach from last year's EMNLP uh, was the strongest. Uh, this approach also uses multiple decoding iterations, and specifically in this case it used um, 10 iterations. Now when we run mask predict for only four iterations, we're already doing better than previous work by a gap of two and a half blue points. If we run mask predict for a bit more, for 10 iterations, uh, like the iterative refinement uh, uh, approach, uh, we're actually able to grow that gap to almost four blue points. So in this family of non-autoregressive uh, approaches, MassPredict is able to actually reach a new state of the art. Now how well does it uh, uh, perform when we compare it to an autoregressive left-to-right transformer? So again, in English to German, MassPredict is able to get pretty close to autoregressive performance. Uh, in fact, in this case, we're about 0.7 blue away. Uh, and this trend is actually quite consistent. We ran it on uh, three language pairs in both directions, and you can see that there's uh, German, Romanian, and Chinese. Uh, and we find that this trend is pretty consistent, so you're always between like half a blue point and uh, 1.2 blue points uh, away from the autoregressive transformer. So to recap, uh, Mask Predict gets state-of-the-art performance in parallel decoding machine translation with about four blue points gain on the uh, English to German data set uh, and an even bigger gain actually in the other direction. Um, it also gets pretty close to the autoregressive transformer uh, with a gap of more or less one blue point. And uh, we didn't really talk about this much, but uh, we talk about it more in the paper. Uh, mask predict is actually much faster, or it, it can get to much faster uh, decoding speeds than an autoregressive transformer. Um, but I, I invite you to check it out in the paper. Um, okay, so uh, it works, but why? Um, so our hypothesis is pretty straightforward. Uh, the more tokens the decoder observes, the less modes it has. And it kind of makes sense because, you know, if you have more information, uh, th then there are less reasonable options uh, to fit to the, to, the, to the mass tokens. So, um, now, now remember that the, uh, the main symptom of multimodality was uh, that you had these tokens repeating over and over again. Well, we're actually going to use that to measure how much multimodality we have at each point. So we're going to run our model for a few iterations and measure how many repeating tokens we have. And you can see that this, this measure kind of drops very, very quickly. And interestingly, it also coincides with the rate that the blue score uh, goes up. So uh, in conclusion, the fact that MaskPredict uses several iterations and at each time it exposes the decoder to more and more information uh, is probably addressing uh, uh, the multimodality problem directly. So I hope by now that you're, you're convinced that MassPredict really works, uh, but I would actually like to show you in the, the last couple of minutes that I have uh, some of the hacks that we had uh, that we used to make it work. Um, and I hope that like maybe someone in the audience will improve upon them. Uh, so the first trick is model distillation. This is a real trick of the trade. Everybody uh, uh, that does uh, um, uh, non autoregressive MT actually uses it. Uh, you basically uh, train on data generated by an autoregressive model. And this accounts for seven blue points when you do it purely autoregressive, when you have like only one iteration of mass predict. Uh, when you do more iterations, it diminishes, but on some data sets it's still uh, a accounts for a significant uh, uh, difference. Uh, so in short, model distillation 
always helps, and we would really, really like to get rid of it. Uh, the other uh, challenge that we have, the other open challenge, is how to determine the number of tokens in the target. Uh, so our current solution uh, basically predicts the target length a priori from the decoder, and to be frank, it's a bit of a hack. Uh, so what we would really like is for the decoder to determine it and be able to change it from iteration to iteration. Uh, we actually try to do that by taking uh, an artificially long target sequence and then padding it with uh, end of sequence tokens. Uh, but this approach gets slightly worse uh, uh, blue scores than uh, what we have at the moment with, with the length, uh, special length token. So, in conclusion, uh, we showed how to train uh, an encoder-decoder transformer in a bird style process where part of the target is observed and everything else needs to be predicted in parallel. We then showed how the mask predict decoding algorithm works and that it can decode the entire target sequence in a constant number of iterations. Finally, we saw that the uh, mask predict uh, uh, approach addresses the multimodality problem and reaches pretty close to autoregressive uh, performance while setting a new state of the art for non autoregressive models. And you know, there are still open challenges in this area, so like I said, I hope I've inspired at least one person in the audience to go up and uh, uh, try to solve them and, uh, you know, make progress in non-autoregressive language generation. Thank you for listening. Thanks a lot for the inspiring talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, so I have a question about the attention mechanism. So I wonder if you f visualized or investigate uh, attention for uh, the model trained in this work. Because uh, for the initial iterations, intuitively, I would imagine that uh, it pays more attention to the source input. And then for later ones, it may be the, you know, more filling in words. Uh, so I wonder, wonder what uh, whether that was the case. And second, second small question. Let, let me just answer that one first. Uh, sure. So that's a great observation. Uh, we haven't visualized it, so I don't know the answer, but, but I would imagine that like, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I see, yeah. thank you. And the second one is, uh, did you use whole world masking or just uh, vanilla masking? Because whole world masking improved birth result, as we all know. And uh, if you used the other vanilla one, I wonder why you chose one over the what, other. What do you mean exactly by forward uh, masking? So on the target side, since you have many iterations, I wonder if you, uh, when you're training, uh, you used the uh, whole world masking or just uh, vanilla oh, masking? No, we didn't do whole world masking. Um, I think at later point, I, I actually don't remember if we if we tried span masking uh, at a later point. But um, we because we're masking like you know between one token and the entire sequence, uh -huh. uh, you get many cases where like <laughs> you, you've got like maybe two or three tokens that you're just seeing. So. I don't think it's going to matter that much. I see. Thank you. For the first question, I really would like to see the result. If you yeah, could tweet yeah. that when you have the results, that yeah. would be great. Well, maybe <laughs> Thank we you. We should check it. Thank you. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we've got to move on to the next one. would be great if you can... Uh, okay, maybe one more question. Hey, just, uh, just quickly. Um, is it fair to say that your model basically establishes consistency in the target by by basically these iterations, right? That's what it's doing. You have this iterative decoding and then you get like a consistent output, right? Um, but I'm wondering if you want to truly address the multimodality problem, wouldn't it be uh, more direct by learning a latent variable model where you basically decide, okay, now I'm going to choose option one in your example or option two, and then I'll do a single forward pass and I'm done, ideally. Yeah, um, we were kind of, that, that's a great point. We were hoping that, you know, because transformers are really, really uh, expressive, that they would kind of figure out a, <laughs> a latent model uh, internally, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case, at least not, you know, in the experiments that we ran. Uh, but, you know, maybe it's wishful thinking on my But, on but my maybe hand. the reason is because the way we train transformers, right, we just optimize likelihood. But if you would take into account, if you would actually train a latent variable model where we make that notion of a latent more explicit, then that yeah. would change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could be. All right. Let's thank our speaker again.